listen to this. Before you implement the strategy, you must first know the purpose of your enemy. Yes, sir. What was the purpose of Sennacherib? To make war with Jerusalem. Yes. That's why he came. Sin, Satan comes into your life to make war, not to make wealth. Right, 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 right. They don't come to make you feel good. Right. It comes to kill, steal. Oh, Bible readers. <laughs> He came with the purpose of making war and he made his presence known. Yeah. That's why when this new battle comes, it's still the same war. You don't have to concern yourself with doing anything outside of what God has told you to do because while the situation has changed, the substance has helped from multiple people yeah. that you trust that can bring about a godly influence so you can get a godly solution. Why? Because it's going to take more than you to defeat Sennacherib. You can't whoop Sennacherib in and of yourself. I know you say sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but, and fire. But you're going to need somebody else who say sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Who got some wise counsel to give. Yes. Somebody else who say sanctified, filled with the Spirit of God. Who actually endured some battles and came out on top. In other words, it's going to take all of us to defeat Sennacherib in our lives. <laughs> oh, they were broken the whole time. This teaches us to stop waiting until you threaten to build up what you know is broken. Yeah. Quit waiting for the right time to be threatened. Yes, you know it's broke. Fix it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Fix it. Yeah. For those who can, let's stay on our feet. As we turn to the book of 2 Chronicles, for those who don't have their Bibles, it'll be on the board. 2 Chronicles, <laughs> chapter 32. Verses 1 through 8. Second Chronicles chapter 32, verses 1 through 8. God bless you. I forget your name, Elder. Catchings. Elder Catchings. God bless Elder Catchings. Give a hand clap of appreciation. Second Chronicles chapter 32, verses 1 through 8. Reads. After these deeds of faithfulness, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and entered Judah. He encamped against the fortified cities, thinking to win them, win them over to himself. And when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib had come and that his purpose was to make war against Jerusalem, he consulted with his leaders and commanders to stop the water from the springs which were outside the city, and they helped him. Thus many people gathered together who stopped all the springs and the brook that ran through the land, saying, Why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? And he strengthened himself, built up all the wall that was broken, raised it up to the towers, and built another wall outside. outside. Also, he repaired the millow in the city of David and made weapons and shields in abundance. Then he set military captains over the people, gathered them together to him in the open square of the city gate and gave them encouragement saying, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid nor dismayed before the king of Assyria, nor before all the multitude that is with him, for there are more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battle. And the people were strengthened by the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. Amen. You may be seeing the house of the Lord. Now, let's see. Let's see. My sermon topic is a new series that God will be blessing me to teach. Uh, for those of you who can make it primarily to the first service, that's why I'll be teaching it mainly. But if he blesses the preacher here, you'll be able to get that as well. It's called The Fight After Faithfulness. The Fight After Faithfulness. Today we'll discuss verses 1 through 8. Same war, different battle. Amen. Verses 9 through 19, we'll discuss don't believe the lies. Yeah. And lastly, in verses 20 through 23, we'll discuss pray for victory. Today, let's talk about same war, mm -hmm. different battle. Yes, sir. This account is also found in 2 Kings chapter 18 and chapter 19, as well as Isaiah chapter 36 and 37. Uh, might as well do it. Homework. Reading those passages. Second Kings chapters 18 and 19, as well as Isaiah chapters 36 and 37. That way we can get a total picture of today's text. This is on the backdrop of Second Chronicles chapter 31, verses 20 through 21. I want to read this real quick. It says, Thus Hezekiah did throughout all Judah, and he did what was good and right and true before the Lord his God. And in every work, 
he began that in the house in the service of the house of God, in the law and in the commandment, to seek his God, he did it with all his heart. So he prospered. Because of Hezekiah's faithfulness and his obedience, he prospered in everything he did, because he did it with all his heart unto God. Which teaches us that if you don't do everything you do unto God, don't expect him to bless it. Amen. Don't expect prosperity if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing as unto the Lord. Some corresponding scriptures would be Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 through 24, just in case you think that scripture is not sufficient for your obedience. In our text, Hezekiah has been faithful unto the Lord. His daddy Ahaz has died. He's raised up as king, and Hezekiah immediately goes after the idolatrous altars that are set up all through Israel. He begins to tear them down. And as he tears them down, he's proven that he wants to be faithful unto God as they become an independent nation. This is important for us because God does not want us to settle for idolatry. Uh -oh. He wants us to do away with idolatry. Amen. Right, right, right. Not just the worship of false gods, mm -hmm. but also worshiping the true God falsely. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Ooh. 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 Not just the worship of a false god. We, we good with that one, but worshiping the true God falsely. Mm -hmm. In other words, giving God something that he don't require. Right. Right. Trying to give God something that he never, he never designed it to be. Right. So Hezekiah becomes in charge, and he immediately goes to work on behalf of God and the nation. Now, this is important because what God is blessing me to teach, every one of us can experience and apply. This series will be something that every one of us can actually utilize for the rest of our lives. So if you're not listening, you're going to set yourself up for failure. This brings us to verse 1. Verse 1, we have our introduction of Sennacherib. Sennacherib. This is what verse 1 says. It says, After these deeds of faithfulness, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and entered Judah. He encamped against the fortified cities, thinking to win them over to himself. After fulfilling obedience, a new challenger approaches. This teaches us that just because you finish being faithful to God don't mean that the battle is over. Yeah. Right, 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 right. There will be a new challenger. Remember, it's the same war, just a new battle. The substance is the same, but the situations change. After these deeds of faithfulness, after committing himself over fully to obeying God, a new challenger emerges. And his name is Sennacherib. Sennacherib. That's a, that's a pretty cool name. Sennacherib. Sennacherib's name means sin has replaced the brothers. Sin has replaced the brothers. Sennacherib is a sin that's designed by the enemy to replace something godly in your life. Sennacherib. Now here's the thing about this Sennacherib. I don't know your Sennacherib. I can't, I can't define your Sennacherib, but you do. You know. Because Sennacherib represents a type of sin or a type of Satan that wants to come into your life. Notice, immediately after these deeds of faithfulness, Sennacherib approaches our doorstep. Sennacherib don't wait till the battle is over. Sennacherib come when you think you can get a break. Sennacherib shows up. Sin shows up. Satan shows up when you least expect it. Right, right, right. But Sennacherib can also represent a new type of sin that desires to be in your life. A new type of sin, a new type of desire, a new type of ungodly lust. One that you never anticipated entering into your life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yet here it is, Sennacherib. Sennacherib approaches, shows up, and encamps around the city. Encamps in front of that gate, representing a new type a fight that the believers have to go through. But Sennacherib's goal is the same as everybody else's. Every other enemy has the exact same goal. First, to bring you under subjection. It has to bring you under subjection because that's where the power of the sin, Sennacherib, lies. Secondly, to cause you to have oppression. It wants to oppress you. And lastly, to bring you into bondage. In other words, Sennacherib wants to make you sob. It's designed to make you solve, to bring you under subjection, to make you its oppressor, or it to be your oppressor, ultimately to bring you into bondage. 
Sennacherib don't show up to play. Sennacherib is serious about why he approaches. Serious about why he comes. Sennacherib wants to test the sincerity of your faithfulness unto God. Yeah, most of us say we, we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, strength. So now can really say, oh yeah? Mm -hmm. Let me, see, where I'm from, we say we're going to see what life like. Right, right, right. So now can really going to see what life like. So now can really want to do like, uh, like, like we sang a song, you know, you say so long, bye-bye. Right, right, right. So now can really going to see how serious you are about what you say. Right, right, right. Uh, I teach my kids, now, my wife is starting to understand this, but we have a saying in our family, like, we don't do fear in this family. So now we're going to see how sincere you are about what your statements are. Yes, sir. But here's the question. Why did Sennacherib come? Well, Hezekiah, recovering the nation's independence, refused to pay tribute his father bound him to pay to Assyria. So during this time, Ahaz, the king of, the, the king of Israel, would pay a tribute or a tax so Assyria wouldn't fight them. In Islam, if you stay in the Islamic state, they have something called the jizya. The jizya is a tax that Christians have to pay to make sure that Muslims don't persecute them. Well, this was the same. You want, our, you want us not to conquer you? Pay me. In other words, when you stop paying sin, sin gonna pay you a visit. When you stop giving all your attention to simple things and simple activity, don't worry about sin gonna show up to see how much you mean what you say. So instead of paying tribute, Hezekiah said, no, we belong to God. Ain't no sense in us having y'all protect us because y'all are under the God that we worship. Right, right, right. And then right. Sennacherib found out about this. Yes. You, you don't want to pay me no more. Right. <laughs> oh, you don't need my protection no more. So sometimes we go to sin because of his protection. Wow. Right, yeah. right, right, it, makes us, right. it makes us feel good. It's our coping mechanism. Right. So, Sennacherib may be a new way of coping with something that God wants you to surrender unto him. Right, sir. Mm. Let, me, let, me, let me move on. Notice it says, he encamped against the fortified cities, thinking to win, himself, win them over to himself. Sennacherib set up camp. He set up camp. He set up base. He set up shop in front of the city gate of Jerusalem. Wow. Not only did he set up camp, he showed up, listen to this, with 185,000 soldiers. Wow. That's why I want y'all to read all of the accounts. Because there were some who were there right in front of the gates while he had others all throughout the city. Listen to this. He showed up to intimidate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Showed up to strut, to strut his force. Sennacherib will come to test the genuineness of your holiness. Right. Mm. If you truly want to be holy, Sennacherib is here to say, let's see how holy you truly want to be. You say, I really love the Lord and I'm committed to him. Sennacherib will say, well, that's what we came to find out. Right. <laughs> because you're either going to serve the Lord 100% or you're going to get back to paying this tribute. Wow, wow, wow. See, in other words, we come to force you to do what we want you to do. Right. Sennacherib. Right. Sennacherib sent 185,000 soldiers. So this is how it went. Sennacherib was actually in war with another nation. Winning. Right. But he was so powerful, so many of them, he sent 185,000 more <laughs> to Judah. Think about that. There's a war that's going on right now. Mm -hmm. Yet, yet, because you decide to live for God, he said, I must keep fighting this war over here, yet I'm going to send some more to see you. Mm -hmm. do you. Do you see how serious sin is? You see how serious Satan is? Yeah. That even though he got a war going on, he still got more minions that can come and see. If you're serious about your walk with Christ. Yeah, yeah. So it says 185,000 soldiers. I want you to remember this because it's going to make sense toward the end of the sermon. But then verses 2 through 4, we have an implementation of strategy. There's an implementation of strategy. He says, and when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib had come and that his purpose was to make war against Jerusalem, he consulted with his leaders and commanders to stop the water from the springs which were outside the city. And they helped him. Thus many people gathered together who stopped all the springs and the brook that ran through the land, saying, Why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? Listen to this. Before you implement the strategy, you must first know the purpose of your enemy. Yes, sir. 
What was the purpose of Sennacherib? To make war with Jerusalem. Yeah. That's why he came. Sin, Satan comes into your life to make war, not to make well. Right, 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 right. They don't come to make you feel good. Right. It comes to kill, steal. Oh, Bible readers. <laughs> he came with the purpose of making war, and he made his presence known. Yeah. That's why when this new battle comes, it's still the same war. You don't have to concern yourself with doing anything outside of what God has told you to do because while the situation has changed, the substance has not He came with the purpose of making war. You know, what is it good for? Absolutely. All right, stop. Say it again. Good, good, okay. But here's how we implement the strategy. Let's implement the strategy. Let's look at what Hezekiah did that we may be able to follow his example. Number one, Hezekiah consulted with the leaders and commanders. In other words, he talked to people of righteous and holy influence. That's important for us, that when the Sennacherib comes into our lives, we go to people who have holy and righteous influence. That's importante. That's important in Spanish for those who don't know. It's important that you go to people with righteous and godly influence in your life. You must go to them because they may know things that you don't know. Right, right, right. Notice that he went to his leaders and commanders. Leaders are those who are just wise and advice. Commanders are those who've been there and done that when it comes to war. Right. So you need some people in your life who've been, who've been alive a little longer than you maybe. Yeah. Who, who are a tad bit smarter than you maybe. Yeah. Who didn't endure some wars that you hadn't endured yet. Yeah. So you can come up with a strategy. On how to defeat Sennacherib. Right. Secondly, he stops the water from the springs outside the city. That deals with the intake that we have. He didn't stop the water from the inside of the city, but from the outside of the city. See, see, you get answers when you deal with wise counsel. Yes, they concluded that it's best to don't don't touch the water from the wells inside. Right. Let's, let's deal with the water from the springs outside. Right. That deals with the intake. And lastly, he got help. That's with enforce. That deals with enforce. Now, most of y'all think I spelled enforce wrong. I did. E enforce means that you do something. I enforce means that you do it with multiple people. So you get help from multiple people yeah. that you trust that can bring about a godly influence so you can get a godly solution. Why? Because it's going to take more than you to defeat Sennacherib. You can't whoop Sennacherib in and of yourself. I know you say sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. But, and fire. But you're going to need somebody else who say sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Who got some wise counsel to give. Somebody else who say sanctified, filled with the Spirit of God. Who actually endured some battles that came out on top. In other words, it's going to take all of us to defeat Sennacherib in our lives. It's important that we know that Sennacherib implements the strategy after understanding that the purpose of my enemy well that, that Hezekiah implements the strategy after realizing that the purpose of Sennacherib is to make war against me he don't come for my good he come for my subjection he don't come for my help he come for my oppression he does not come for my good he come for my bondage now no matter how many titles he may have to make me feel good about the things he's saying ultimately if I yield to him He's going to win victory over me. Yes. So notice this. Notice this. They stopped the springs and the brooks. They stopped the springs and the brooks. Springs are big flowing water. Brooks are shallow water. Now water is good. It's good to have water. Water represents life. It's good to have water. But notice they didn't deal with the water inside the gate. They cut off the water outside the gate. They, they cut off the, the springs and the brooks. Uh, access of life that the enemy could use against us. In other words, just because it's good to you don't necessarily mean it's good for you. All things are lawful, but not expedient. All things are lawful, but not necessarily good or beneficial for me. I, I need the water inside the gate. I don't really need the water outside the gate. 
listen to this. We must cut off the big and the shallow water supply because it's giving our enemy life and access to us. It may not be harmful to you, but Sennacherib is at the door. And the longer Sennacherib is able to snack a rib on your water, he can snatch some things in your life. Now, if we focus on the water outside the city gate, we won't appreciate the water inside the city gate. If I get so caught up on what I'm losing outside my city gate, I won't appreciate the water that's inside my city gate. If I focus on the things that God has given me outside, they says it's no longer your, in your season this season. Yeah. I will miss and disrespect what he's given me in my season. Right. 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 I may have to cut off some big brooks, some big springs, and some shallow brooks. Because the big springs feed my shallow brooks. Yeah. The spring gives life to the brook. Mm, right. So it doesn't do me any good to get rid of the big spring. Right. And still not dealing with the shallow brook. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The brook needs the spring. Once I cut off the, the spring, right. it's a lot easier for me to deal with the brook. Right. Yeah. Right. Because if I keep the brook and the spring alive, I may be happy, but Sennacherib is going to be living. Yeah. He's, he's teaching us a strategy yes. Outside is the limited water Inside is the living water Once I cut off the water supply outside The living water continues to strive in me Once I deal with the spring outside I got a well of water that won't run dry If I keep focusing on the water outside I just respect the living water on the inside The water that springs from glory yes. that won't run dry. Yes. From this well that has no bottom. Right. If I focus on the water outside my city gates, right. I am giving Satan access to me in an area that he don't need to be. Right. But if I focus on the living water inside my city gates, yes. I'm gonna get more power for the enemy from the for the enemy in the areas which God designed and created me to have. All right, I'm about, I gotta move on. I gotta say this. I gotta say this. They asked a brilliant question. Uh, Elder Cashin, this, this question is going to bless you. It blessed me. It's going to bless you. Listen to this. They, had, they say, why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? Why should the enemy have access to our water if he means to kill us? Why is he planted and posted outside my gates, drinking my water? What good, what sense does it make that he outside to kill me and drink in my water to do so. Yes, 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 yes sir. Mm. Yeah. I got water inside. I don't necessarily need the water outside. Why am I going to keep feeding him so he can defeat me? Right. You got you, you to gotta know your snack meal. But you also got to know your water supply. What are your water supplies that snack meal can attach himself to and live to bring about the feed? What do you find enjoyment that keeps the natural river alive in your life? Yeah. What, enjoy, what enjoyable things do you do that God is saying this is not the season to do it? Right. Because it's keeping Sennacha River alive in your life. You know them. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know them. I don't know Sennacha River. I don't know the springs. I don't know the brooks. But you know them. But it don't make sense to know them and don't get them dry. Amen. So here's the strategy. Here's the strategy. The strategy that they are implementing is designed to dry out the enemy. Well. As we implement the strategy, we dry out the enemy. Oh, Lord, I'm about to do it again. I'm about to end up running. You, you can't feed them and expect them to get weaker. But the more water they get, the more supply of life they have. Yes, Our bodies are made up of 70% water. You know how it is if you start fasting? You get weak. Right. Heads start hurting. You get irritable a little bit faster. You know, especially if you really going on a fast. You know, y'all just, y'all eat everything. Eat, drink, and then just say, I ain't gonna watch, I ain't gonna watch my favorite show today. Cause you, cause, cause you, cause you gotta go to work. You ain't miss it. You just couldn't make it. Never mind. 
But in verses 5 through 6, there's an induction of strength. Listen to this. And he strengthened himself, built up all the wall that was broken, raised it up to the towers, and built another wall outside. Also, he repaired the millow in the city of David and made weapons and shields in abundance. Then he set military captains over the people, gathered them together to him in the open square of the city, of the city gate, and gave them encouragement, saying, listen to this, listen to this. While the enemies on the outside are getting weaker, the people of God on the inside are getting stronger. While Sennacherib and his camp are outside the city gates getting weaker because they no longer have water supply, the people of God on the inside of the city are getting stronger because they got the living water. They outside getting weaker, yet they mighty in number. We get inside getting stronger, yet we're few in number. What's amazing about this is, while Sennacherib and them outside, they don't know that the people of God are actually strategizing against them. They so focused on the city gate that they missing the springs. Well, God wants you to focus on the access points. Yeah. Focus on the entry points. Right. Because the enemy is not more focused on those, he's focused on you. Right. So as you know that the enemy is there, posted, waiting to get in, you start dealing with the areas in which he is not aware of. Yeah. Listen to this. Not only was Hezekiah strengthened, but also the others were strengthened. Because in order for Hezekiah to be strong, the people would have to follow his leadership. Right. So when he got strength, they got strength afterwards. Sometimes people need your strength for them to be strong. Amen. Once he got strength, other people followed in strength. Monkey see monkey. Well, <laughs> you see me, and I see you. If I see you walking in strength, even though there's 185,000 outside, it'll inspire me to get strong, even though there's 185,000 outside. After we consulted with one another and gave wise counsel to one another, we start doing what God tells, tells us to do and start implementing a strategy that brings about more strength. Yes. But this is a, I got so much to say in here, but I'm not, I just want to highlight this quick, real quick. It says they built up all the wall that was broken. The issue is the wall was broken the whole time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The wall was broken since King Ahaz. Right. The wall was broken when he tore down the idolatrous altars. They were broken the whole time. This teaches us to stop waiting until you threaten to build up what you know is broken. Yeah. Quit waiting for the right time to be threatened. Yes, sir. You know it's broke. Fix it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Fix it. Yes, right. you, you know the wall is broke right there. You know the wall broke from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. <laughs> Fix it. Right. You know that 2 a.m., 4 a.m. time in the hour, yeah. the wall broke? You know that 10.30 to 11.25 period of time in your life where the, the wall is broke? Fix it. Right. You know there's certain people that you get around where the wall is broke? Yeah. There are certain places you go yeah. and the wall is broke? Yeah. Oh, there are certain things you hear? Say it. The wall is broke? Right. Right. Certain smells yes, yeah. infiltrate because the wall is broke? You can't see certain people because they take you back to certain places. The wall is broke. You know the wall is broke. Fix it. Before Sennacherib come. They made weapons and shields in abundance. For them, they made weapons and shields in abundance. For us, we only need one of each. Ephesians 6, 17 says we need the weapon, which is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Yeah. Verse 16 of the same book and chapter, Shield of Faith. Yeah. All we need is one of each to ward off Sennacherib. Yes. See, the Sennacheribs ain't scared of us. Right. Trust me when I tell you. Right. That's why they posted up in front of our house. Yeah. 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 Showing themselves to be a great mighty army. Sennacheribs ain't tripping. But when we come together, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's important that we don't abandon the church when Sennacherib comes. We keep coming to church when Sennacherib comes. Because that's what we get our answers for Sennacherib. Notice that Sennacherib came, and the wise counsel was given to go to war against Sennacherib. They came to church. They didn't abandon it. 
Remember, church is not the place where your problems get solved. It's the place where you learn how to solve your problems. Don't abandon the house of God. But he also said they gave him words of encouragement. Encouragement is a weapon and a shield. When somebody calls you and they're dealing with their synacrib, don't discourage them. Encourage them. It don't mean that you don't hold them accountable. It don't mean that you don't give them words of correction. But it does mean you also give them some words of encouragement. Yeah. Because you don't know how hard it is for somebody to actually say, I need your help. Yeah. I said it in the first sermon. I'm going to say it again. I know y'all. Okay. Know y'all good. <laughs> know y'all well. Yeah. Uh, some of us got that pride that pride issue. It's pride-itis. Yeah. It's swelling up in us. Yeah. We got that egotistical thing, you know, uh, and it takes a lot for some of us to call somebody and say, I need help. So when somebody calls you dealing with Sennacherib, understand that they didn't want to call you to begin with. They actually said, I need your help. Encourage them. So you can help them with their sword and their shield. All right. Let's, but lastly, verses 7 and 8, because we are in communion. There's inspiration from the Savior. There's some inspiration from the Savior. He says, be strong and courageous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do not be afraid nor dismayed before the king of Assyria, <clears throat> nor before all the multitude that is with them. For there are more with us than with him. Yeah. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. Yeah. And the people were strengthened by the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. Amen. Before Hezekiah could inspire the troops, God had to inspire him first. This is important that I, I, I point out. I, I go behind the veil and let y'all in on what happened. When you read the other accounts, you'll find out that Hezekiah was actually scared in the beginning. Amen. Yes, sir. He was scared. And he was afraid. That's what the old folks say. We say afraid. He was afraid. <laughs> they can, the messengers come to Hezekiah with their shirts torn because they scared. Hezekiah tore his shirt too. <laughs> he was scared. But after talking with godly, holy, righteous counsel and coming up with a godly, holy, and righteous strategy and, and through prayer, he, he got inspired. And when he got inspired, everybody else got inspired. In other words, he started leading by example and others started following his example. Stop telling folks you trust God and your example shows the opposite. Amen. Yes, you have the you have, you got the right to be afraid, yeah. but you also got a responsibility to walk in faith. You got a right to feel, but you also have a responsibility to act. So when when Hezekiah got the news about one hundred eighty five thousand at the door, so that uh, Hezekiah was like <laughs> Isaiah, son of Amos, because uh, he's he's in this too. Oh no, I'm getting ahead of myself. Leaders, commanders, come on. Let's come together. How do we deal with this problem? How do we deal with this sin? How do we deal with this Satan outside our gates? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And once they got godly solutions, there was inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay. I, I, have a, I have a math equation. I got a math equation for inspiration. Physical strength, what the text says, be strong. Plus emotional strength. What the text says, be courageous. Uh -huh. Plus fearlessness. What the text says, don't be afraid or dismayed. Here it is. Times focus on God equals inspiration. Physical strength plus emotional strength plus fearlessness. Times focusing on God equals inspiration. And no matter how much physical strength you got, how much emotional strength you bring to the table. It don't matter if you feel this, as feel as can be. If you do not focus on God, who is the amplifier, right, right. the rest of it don't mean nothing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you are focusing on the pluses, but not the multiplier, right. the plus and not the times, right. two plus two equals four. Mm -hmm. Three plus three equals six. That's true. But when you times that with focusing on God, he amplifies it more than what it actually is because you're focusing on the one who got all power over the Sennacherib army. Focus
emphasis on God is the multiplier. Right. He turns the feeble into forceful. Yes. The weak into warriors. Yes. The timid to triumphant. Yes. Not because of Sennacherib, right. but because of the Lord our God. Yes. When the Lord God is the center of our sight, his strength becomes inevitable in our life. Yes. That's why God allows Sennacherib to come and post up to see who you're going to look at. Yeah, yeah I wanted Sennacherib to come after your faithfulness to see if you'll continue to be faithful by looking unto me. I didn't, I didn't think Sennacherib was going to miss the day. I'm prepared for it. The question is, what about you? See, here's the thing. All of us are going to be tested with Sennacherib. We're going to be tested with uh, a, a, a same war, different battle. If you apply the strategy, you will have victory over Sennacherib. Now, remember I told y'all, uh, 185,000. You know, ain't that many people in Walla. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a that's a lot of people. Think about it. Think about it. 185,000 people just scattered throughout your city. Drinking up all your... Go into your refrigerator. It's 185,000 soldiers. He's at war with another nation winning the battle. Right now, snap real. He sends representatives and they deep. Nevertheless, I got a sneak peek for y'all. They don't even get inside the game. Because when you implement the strategies that God would have, 185,000 soldiers is just a grain of sand to the living God. Right, 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 right. God never wanted us to focus on Sennacherib, his armies, etc. He always tells us looking unto Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despise the shame and see at the right hand of God. God never told us to look at Sennacherib. He told us cast all our burdens on him and he would sustain us. He would never permit the righteous to be moved. God never told us to pay attention to Sennacherib. Never. He told us to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Because when our eyes are fixed on Jesus and we implement the strategies that God gives us, we walk in victory. So here's the, here's the solution of our strategy. As we implement wise counsel, as we shut off the water supplies that we know about, that Sennacherib can feed off of, yeah. and we go to people that we can trust that actually help us. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. If somebody call you, also help them. Don't just say, I'm gonna pray for you. Pray for them and also do something extra. So it may require, if you know somebody's struggling with something between 10 p.m. and 11 p.m., how about you call them a text and just let them know, we talked about this, I'm praying for you. If somebody's struggling in their flesh and they, they told you about that, that person on their job, let them know that I'm here for you. The moment they come on your mind, call me so we can talk about it. Because you can't defeat Sennacherib by yourself and neither can they. Oh, fall in heaven.